call the meeting to order and I would ask the clerk to call the roll. Mr. Chambers. Mr. Chambers, roll call. Here. Mr. Mullins. Here. Mr. Reynolds. Here. Ms. Schenholster. Here. Dr. Lee. Here. We have a quorum. I'd like to thank everyone for coming tonight to the council meeting, and I would ask that if you would please stand for the prayer and the pledge. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this new year. We ask that you will give us the wisdom and the guidance to move this city forward as you would have it today. Help us to have a servant's heart as we serve the people of this city of Millersville. Be with us tonight as we take on the business of this city and help us to do it in a way that is pleasing unto you. Amen. Amen. I, pledge I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You have all received copies of the minutes of the December the 23rd council meetings. Are there any corrections? I do not hear any, so I would, I would ask that you give a motion to adopt these minutes. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. I'd ask the clerk to call the roll. Mr. Chambers? Aye. Mr. Mullins? Aye. Mr. Reynolds? Aye. Ms. Schenholster? Aye. Dr. Lee? Aye. That motion carries. We have two public hearings to consider tonight. The procedures for each of these hearings will be as follows. Once it has been determined that the hearing has been properly advertised, <coughs> then the clerk will read the proposed <coughs> amendment. We will then hear the advisory decision of the Planning Commission. The Chair will recognize any person or persons who would like to speak on behalf of the amendment. The Chair will then hear from any person who would like to speak in opposition of the amendment. We will then give the opportunity for rebuttal. When the chair recognizes any person or persons who would like to testify, I would ask that you first give your name and your address for the record. Anyone who would like to speak to encourage is encouraged to do so. However, in the essence of time, I am requesting that you keep your comments as brief as possible. The first hearing is to consider Ordinance 1411 dash 027 to amend the, de the development code to rezone 141 West Baldwin Street. Has the public hearing been properly advertised? Yes ma'am it has been. I will ask the clerk to read the ordinance by caption. Ordinance 1411-027 to conduct a public hearing of an ordinance amending the land development code to rezone approximately 0.27 acres from CC Community Commercial to MR2 properties located at 141 West Baldwin Street, Baldwin County Tax Map M61 Parcel 012. The property is currently owned by Bobby Murphy Jr. on the sold in, and combined with the adjoining property in order to develop two townhomes with a total of approximately 32 bedrooms. We're actually going to combine those two public hearings because they're all they're on the same piece of property. So he would need to go ahead and read the second ordinance. I have just been also. told that they want these to be combined, so I will ask uh, the clerk to also read uh, the ordinance for 1411-028. Okay. <coughs> 
they're combining. This is to conduct. Uh, this is ordinance O-1411-028. This is to conduct a public hearing of an ordinance meeting the land development code to rezone approximately point, point one point five eight acres from CC Community Commercial to MR2. Property is located at 390 South Wilkinson Street, all county tax map M61 parcel 013. This property is currently owned by Mo Bobby Murphy Sr. and Bobby Murphy Jr. and will be sold and combined with the adjoining property in order to develop two townhomes with a total of approximately 32 <coughs> bedrooms. What is the advisory decision on these two ordinances? Let me check that second one. Zero two seven was uh, recommended for approval. As was zero two eight. Both are uh, recommended for approval. Is there anyone present who would like to speak in favor of the amendment? I think Mervyn was gonna present. To let you know these things. Yes, right. She just. Hey, Marvin Gray, I'm planning and zoning. These two parcels were right next to each other, so of course, if one doesn't pass, then there's no need for the other to pass because they will be combined into one parcel. And it is currently right next to a parcel that already has been developed by the same developer that has the apartments. He's looking at doing the same style of townhomes when he combines these. And uh, it will be two buildings. It's looking at approximately 32 bedrooms. And it was both of these were unanimous by the planning and zoning board. It passed. Any questions? Sir? The developer then. Tim Wright. I live at 408 Highway 24 East. Uh, and I'm Eric Channel. We are proposing to build uh, two sets of townhouses on this piece of property. Uh, we've, we've done this before. We've done the same thing over 620 South Jefferson, tore down four ragged houses, and, and <coughs> we, we rent strictly to, not, not strictly to, but we rent mostly to college students, mainly college students that are girls that are on their, their last two years of college, they're nursing students. The teachers, and I'm going to tell you, we've already rented all 14, so if you hear about somebody dying, when, if y'all don't pass this, it'll be me. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the students are just, they love these properties, and we, we own them. I live in this town. I've been here my whole life. I'm 57 years old. We, we own them with the general contractors, and we manage them, and I don't put it with any foolishness. I'll be more than glad to show you what, what it's going to look like if you if you like to see you'll hand them to me I'll pass them this is the property that we already have this that will be beside that same piece of property mm -hmm. this is the townhouses we built at 620 yep. South Jefferson you did and this is that's what they the 14 will look like we we looked at what this improvement will be and it's a uh, it increases the tax value of that particular piece of property by about fourteen thousand dollars a year for city and county taxes combined mm -hmm over what it's already drawing today. And we did the same thing at the 620, and we did the same thing on these that we built on the corner of Wilkeson, Wilkeson and Franklin, which was just a hole when we started. I'm gonna pass these down for them to see also. Yeah. You're pretty much gonna mirror the development that you already have as far as styling. Yes, it looked like you took a helicopter and dropped them in. <laughs> okay. Is there any other questions from the council that you may want to ask? Okay. Would you like to speak, sir? Or uh, one, one more thing. You and looking at it, it looks like you're going to come in off the of ball. That is correct. Okay, Mr. Chambers, the microphone. So they will face, you know, they'll, they'll face Wilkinson Street, and they'll also you'll come in with your parking off the of ball Street, which is a less traffic area. Okay. Thank you. 
Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to speak in favor? Is there anyone that would like to speak in opposition? Seeing no one. Um, is there anyone on council that would like to make a statement or, or ask a question? This concludes the presentation of evidence. May I have a motion for, on the ordinance? Madam Mayor, I make a motion that we accept the findings of the Planning and Zoning Board and approve the request for their townhomes. Second. A nice clerk to call the road. <coughs> Mr. Chambers? Aye. Mr. Mullins? Aye. Mr. Reynolds? Aye. Ms. Schenholster? Aye. Dr. Lee? Passes. That passes. That concludes the old business, so we will now move into the new business. I'll ask the clerk to please read Ordinance 1501-001 by caption as the first reading of the ordinance to consider zoning to 2637 North Columbia Street. This is uh, this is to conduct the first reading of an ordinance amending the land development code. Rezone property located at 2637 North Climb Street. Property is currently owned by Marie Murphy and Zone CC. Owner desires to rezone property MR2 in order to combine it with the adjoining property so it can be developed with approximately 11 residential buildings and one non residential building. There will be a total of approximately 60 units with 134 bedroom total. Total combined properties will be approximately 7.2 acres. This ordinance is assigned to the Planning and Zoning Commission. I would ask the clerk to read the ordinance 1501-002 by caption as the first reading of an ordinance to consider rezoning of 90 Joiner Road. This is to conduct the first reading of an ordinance amending the land development code to rezone property located at 90 Joiner Road Property is currently owned by Marie Murphy and Zone CC. Owner desires to rezone property MR2 in order to combine it with the adjoining property so it can be developed with approximately 11 residential buildings and one non-residential building. There will be a total of approximately 60 units with 134 bedrooms total. Total combined properties will be approximately 7.2 acres. This ordinance is assigned to the Planning and Zoning Commission. I will ask the clerk to read resolution 1501-001, my caption. Yes, ma'am. <coughs> this to authorize a contract for management services with the Development Authority of the City of Millersville and Bowen County for uh, uh, Development Authority of the City of Millersville and Bowen County for staffing assistance of a shared management or administrator position in the Economic Development Center. You have heard the resolution. Is there a motion to adopt? So moved. So, second. Is there any discussion? Uh, yes, I want to point out that this would be a uh, shared position. Um, basically um, as a receptionist also to help with minutes uh, with both authorities and uh, to assist uh, in the economic development building uh, all the way up on the, uh, uh, this person would be down on the first floor but would be helping out everybody including uh, engineering and, and um, uh, everybody else up on the third floor. Does anyone else? I have a motion and a second. I'll ask the clerk to call the roll. Mr. Chambers? Aye. Mr. Mullins? Aye. Mr. Reynolds? Aye. Ms. Schenholster? Aye. Dr. Lee? Aye. <coughs> I will ask the clerk to read resolution 1501-002 by caption. <coughs> This authorizes a memorandum of understanding 
with the Georgia Department of Community Affairs to allow Milledgeville Main Street participation in the Georgia Main Street program. You have heard the resolution. Is there a motion to adopt? So moved. Second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, I'll ask the clerk to call the roll. Mr. Chambers? Aye. Mr. Mullins? Aye. Mr. Reynolds? Aye. Ms. Schenholster? Aye. Dr. Lee? Aye. That passes. I will ask the clerk to read resolution 1501-003 by caption and then read the letter into the minutes. To authorize resolution R-1501-003 to authorize Acting Mayor Jeanette H. Walden to draft and send a letter to Senator Burt Jones and Representative Rusty Kidd disapproving the introduction of legislation into the Georgia General General Assembly to unify the governments of the city of Milledgeville and Baldwin County. In the letter. Uh, dated January 13, 2015, Senator Burt Jones, 407 East Street, East 2nd Street, Jackson, Georgia, and Re Representative Rusty Kidd, 102 South Wayne Street, Milledgeville, Georgia, reference proposed legislation um, consolidating the governments of the city of Milledgeville and Baldwin County. Dear Senator Jones and Representative Kidd, I am writing you on behalf of the City of Millersville concerning the proposed legislation that Representative Kidd intends to introduce in the upcoming session of the General Assembly for the purpose of consolidating the governments of the City of Millersville and Baldwin County. Those individuals in our community have been most vocal in support of consolidation, consolidated government have attempted to define the issue in terms of the right of the citizens of Millersville and Baldwin County to vote as to whether the two local governments will be consolidated. While as a matter of principle, no one disputes that the right of our citizens to vote on a particular form of government is paramount to our democracy. However, our concern is that our citizens will not be voting on the concept of consolidated government, but will be voting on a specific charter with provisions that have not been particularly well thought out. There has been little or no information provided to the public regarding the actual costs of implementing consolidation. Hopefully, as successful businessmen, you would agree that it is ill-advised to consolidate two businesses or governments without being fully aware of the costs associated with such consolidation. As both of you are aware, our community has struggled mightily over the past six years due to economic hardship that have placed tremendous strains on both local governments. And even though we are making measured progress toward a recovery, implementing consolidation in the foreseeable future is ill-advised for the financial well-being of both the City of Middlesville and Baldwin County. While we acknowledge the efforts of those who have assisted Representative Kidd in his efforts to draw a new consolidated charter, we feel that the lack of technical support and financial expertise from the two local governments has resulted in, proposed, in a proposed consolidated charter that simply will not work for the citizens of Millersville and Baldwin County. You are both aware of the critique provided to you by Mr. Sammy Hall, Chairman of the Baldwin County Board of Commissioners, attached to his email of December 12, 2014. While I, along with the individual members of the Board of Aldermen, have our own opinions related to each of the issues Mr. Hall identifies, it is worth pointing out that those issues are just some of the issues that weren't being addressed before any legislation concerning consolidation is submitted to the General Assembly. In closing, I would ask on behalf of the City of Millersville that you engage local elected officials in the process of determining what is best for Millersville and Baldwin County. We too were elected by the voters by overwhelming majorities. Therefore, we deserve the opportunity to participate in the process that city and county voters will have the necessary facts and information in which to make an informed decision 
at whatever point in time consolidation of the two local governments is placed before our citizens. We look forward to engaging in a dialogue with both of you again. We offer the financial expertise and the technical support of our staff in evaluating all costs associated with consolidation. With best regards, I am sincerely Jeanette H. Walton, Acting Mayor, City of Millersville. You have heard the resolution. Is there a motion to adopt? Make a motion to approve. Uh, Second. Okay. Madam Mayor, uh, in time for You're out of order. Um, is there any discussion among the council? Is there anything anyone wants yes, to Mayor, say? Yes, Mayor Walton, I, I would like to address the council on these issues, and if it pleases the board, I would care to address them from the citizens' uh, podium. Members of Council, I have several very serious problems with these resolutions. The first of which is that each resolution states that the city opposes attempts to unify municipal and county operations without consultation and consent of municipal and county elected officials. You cannot state that you were not consulted. Each and every one of us has had the opportunity to be a part of this process. These meetings were not held in secret but were in fact publicly advertised and open. All elected officials were specifically invited to participate on numerous occasions dating as far back as 2011, and that is a matter of record with the Union Recorder. I myself have attended numerous meetings to see the document as it has developed and have found myself wondering where the rest of council was. The mayor even went so far as to appoint a committee of both city and county officials to look into this. Mr. Chambers, I believe you chaired that committee, and I understand that the, this committee only met twice, and they did not have any submissions to the Citizens Charter Writing Committee. If you were not consulted, then that is a result of your own willful absence in this process. Secondly, I take issue with the way that this issue has been approached. Last week, when we sat down to lunch with Senator Jones to discuss the upcoming legislative session, there were several topics of local interest that we talked about. The meeting conveniently did not include our state representative, Mr. Kidd, and when citizens who attended raised the question of unification, your only response was that it was not on the agenda. How is it that the issue wasn't important enough to talk to Senator Jones last week, but merits a letter and a resolution all on its own this week? Thirdly, when did we as a council sit down to discuss this? Ms. Schenholster told me at our December 23rd meeting that we used to talk about things, but that I ruined that. So please, tell me how it is that we can function as a body politic without the benefit of open discussion of public policy. If you have discussed this among yourselves without including me, then shame on you for excluding a whole district of our community. Moreover, such actions are an ethical infringement on the open meetings law. If you are not interested in open discussion of public policy, then you have again violated the ethical dimensions of your oath of office and should consider the legal ramifications. Fourth, at no point has this body conducted a fact-finding mission to determine the benefits or weaknesses of a unified government. Where is our statement about the reasons you wish to disapprove of unification unilaterally? Is it just because you don't like it or threatened by it? What is it? Fifth. Can you not see the hypocrisy in saying on one hand that you believe in the right of the citizens to vote and then using the other to cast a vote on their behalf? It is inappropriate for this council to speak for the, to the, for the entire community and is an issue that should be left to our citizens to decide. Your individual votes here ca should carry no more weight than any citizen of our community. And, your, and if, you, if you are using your position to dismiss an idea that you may be personally opposed to, that is an abuse of power. The County Commission has already adopted a resolution in favor of allowing unification to move to the state legislature without condition or prejudice. Why are we unwilling to do the same? If Ms. Walden wishes to send a letter to Senator Jones and Representative Kidd, then I invite you to do that in the capacity that any other citizen would, privately and without the endorsement of this entire city council. In the interest of protecting the people's right to vote on how they are to be governed, 
I move that we strike from the first paragraph of the body of the resolution everything between and including indicating and county. And in the interest of reflecting the truth of the matter, I would move that the language of the second paragraph of the body of the resolution be modified. I move to strike everything between and including but and officials. Madam Mayor, um, is, is, he refer is he referring to the resolution that we're voting on right now or the one that we haven't got to? He's apparently the one we're voting on right now. We have a motion and we have a second. Madam Chair, I was standing to be recognized when time ran out of, in the work session. I request that you suspend the rules and allow me to comment on this resolution. We'll leave that up to the council. Does the council wish to suspend the rules? Uh, matter of procedure, we do have a motion pending. We would need to settle that before we could exactly. recognize such an offer. Which motion? At the appropriate time, I request that you do so. We have a motion on the floor, and we have a second <laughs> on the resolution 1501-003. Oh. As a matter of protocol, since we've been talking protocol, I don't, I don't know. You made a motion. Yes, in a motion before the motion can be. My motions will need to be seconded, or alternatively, they can be left. To, that is your. That is at your pleasure, Council. But I, I believe we're still in the discussion phase of the first motion. All right. We had a motion and a second, and we're in the discussion stage. And there was a motion and a second. I would like to speak. speak. Okay. I didn't you prepare a speech. I'm not going to get up and grandstand. But I do want to. I do. I do uh, Thank you. No, don't come on. You are out of order. All right. One, one thing I do want to mention is that, uh, and I've heard this, uh, Senator, I mean, uh, excuse me, Representative Kidd mentioned it uh, in, the, in a letter uh, that was uh, received, I think, written to our acting mayor. And uh, you have, um, uh, Mr. Reynolds posted it on your uh, Facebook page, and there, there seems to be, I'm not sure where the information came from about the committee that I chaired, and that we only met twice. Uh, I, maybe you can explain to me where you heard this, or because you didn't ask me. By all means, sir. Yeah. State your position. How, how many times did the committee meet, and oh, did you did you offer met, any suggestions right, to the committee, the committee? Committee met four times. Subcommittees met three times. I met with Mr. Pugh on a one on one basis, probably eight to ten times. And would you not say somewhere in that area, Jim? I think that's probably correct. But I, I also want to say you're one of the uh, only two that expressed any interest in finding out what unification meant or what it could mean for this community. Thank you. Well, one thing I want to mention, and you know, as long as uh, you bring up about your serving when some of us were in diapers, I think I was actually in high school, but. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, I've been dealing with this uh, unification issue since uh, 1987. Where you are? Uh, that's what? Emotion. Almost 30 years? And it's, and it's uh, At some point in time, this issue has to come up. At some point in time. I know to date we've had at least three studies that have been commissioned uh, by both the city and the county. Um, and I, I think there is, uh, in my mind and in the minds of uh, people from my district, there is a time now to try to bring this forward for a vote. Uh, while I, and while I'll speak more about proper protocol, uh, the way things have been done in the past, and uh, when our former uh, uh, Speaker of the House, uh, Murphy, uh, 
he would not allow local legislation to come forward uh, without at least coming before uh, the local elected officials. While I don't agree with the way that, uh, that this has been taken forward, I have to feel like that I've got to allow this part of this situation to go through and see whether or not other House members agree should it go forward? Should it be brought back? Should it be reintroduced? Should it be changed? It's got to go forward at some point in time. I, uh, while I personally agree with the concept of unification, especially within this small county and city, I do also want to make sure that as it goes forward that it is not going to be a rushed process and that we take our time about doing this, especially monetarily. Very concerned when I see our neighboring county and some of the uh, issues that they have, uh, have gotten. That's all I have to say. Is there anyone on council that would like to make any other remarks? Yes, I, I have some remarks. Um, you know, I understand what Mr. Chambers is saying. Um, back when we, and, and for people to say that we've never been interested, we've never attended meetings. When you attend a meeting and you're told that you are, you know, I'm, I've invited the elected officials, but regardless of what you say this is going forward, then you, you feel like you know, regardless of what, regardless of what any input that you give, because I talked with Mr. Pugh, he can't sit there and say that he contacted me and I didn't communicate back with him because we talked at length. So, um, you know, I. You, but the thing about it is, when you're told that by Representative Kidd at the first initial meeting, before he even appointed his committee, that regardless of whether the elected officials were involved and he didn't need them to be involved in the process because it was moving forward regardless. Why would you break your neck to go to an uh, attend a meeting when you've already been told that your opinion doesn't matter? Well, ma'am, because well, we the felt like uh, I'm not finished, okay, and I didn't interrupt you. All right, you spoke. That, you uh, spoke, uh, okay. No. But so well, so my when name I, was just used so I, when I you um, be able to give an opportunity to respond. But you can be respectful, sir. I didn't well, interrupt you. Could you. Be too. But I'm talking. Work, oh, excuse me. Sir, you are out of order. You can continue you know, we, mission. We, we sit up here and we listen to you all, and the minute we start talking, you don't want to hear anything that we have to say. But you know that that's and that and you don't perceive that as being disrespectful. And you know the the other thing that I was going to say is that. In, 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 your, in your process of, of contacting people and, and, and talking to people, you all, this whole committee of unification over there, all of you over there, you conveniently left out the majority of the black community and you purposely left out the black elected officials. You're going to say that, Yes, Mr. indeed. Just, just the whole room. Yeah. the whole room. But, You're out of order also. But I know what I'm talking about because uh, when the chamber was involved and everybody contacted, the um, certain members of council and Z then Dr. Lee, myself, and Mr. Mullins yep. was conveniently left out. There, there are things that, that have been done that, that um, un, you know, you need to tell the whole truth about. And, so and there's a reason behind that. And there's, and there's a problem with a document that, he made from the that dumped the majority of the black elected officials into one district knowing that we're all going to be pitted against each other. There's a purpose for that too. So that's why I have a problem with the document as presented. There are things that need to be discussed. You need to sit down at the table with the elected officials that are involved with local government and, 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 and talk about unification, talk about finances, talk about the things and work those issues out. And then we could all come forward together with a charter that will work well for everybody. So those are my problems with the, with the, um, the legislation that's presented at this time. We, we now have a motion that Mr. Reynolds made at the uh, table. Is there anyone 
uh, that is going to second that motion. I don't hear a second. So I will go back to the motion and the second on, that I got on the uh, resolution for 1501-003. And I'll ask the clerk if he would to call the roll. Mr. Chambers? Nay. Mr. Mullins? Aye. Mr. Reynolds? Nay. Ms. Schenholster? Aye. Dr. Lee? Aye. That's a 3 2 vote in favor. That's a 3 2 vote in favor, so the motion carries. I will ask. I will ask the clerk to read. I will ask the clerk to read a resolution. 1501-004 by caption. A resolution to indicate that the Millersville City Council does not support local legislation being introduced into the 2015 session of the General Assembly to unify governments of the City of Millersville and Baldwin County. Do I hear a motion to adopt? So moved. So. I have a motion and I have a second. Is <coughs> there any discussion on that? Hearing no discussion, I'll ask the clerk to call the roll. Mr. Chambers? Nay. Mr. Mullins? Aye. Mr. Reynolds? Nay. Ms. Schenholster? Aye. Dr. Lee? Aye. That was a three to two vote, so that motion carries. We have one new alcohol license application to consider tonight. Uh, this is for uh, Salvin Paliti Pez um, on behalf of Shahi Arav Incorporated doing business H and H <coughs> Deli and Grocery located at 1441 Vincent Highway. And this is for beer and wine retail package to go. Is there a motion to approve this application? So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion on this? Hearing none, I'll ask the clerk to file the roll. Mr. Chambers? Aye. Mr. Mullins? Aye. Mr. Reynolds? Aye. Ms. Schenholster? Aye. Dr. Lee? If there's no further business to conduct, I'll ask for a motion to adjourn. Uh, Mayor Walden, if I would, I would like to make known by way of public announcement that there is an ethics hearing uh, this Friday at 9 a.m. in the municipal courtroom at the City Police Department. Thank you, Mr. Reynolds. Is there anyone else that has anything that they would like to add? Hearing none, I'll ask for a motion to adjourn. Second. 